us are in love with Jesus on today. I'm going to ask you one more time. How many of us are in love with Jesus on today? I don't know about you, but he's been good to me. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. He loved me when I didn't love myself. He picked me up when I was in the boat and the fire. And he turned me around when he placed my feet on solid ground. Isn't it good to be in love with Jesus on today? Isn't it good to be in love with the master on today? Isn't it good to be in love with the king of kings?
to put it right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Come on now. No. You don't prepare yourself to put it right yes. mm -hmm. by sitting at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doing absolutely nothing. You don't prepare to put it right by not studying your Bible. Mm -hmm. All right. If we are going to put it right on today, we have to start doing things according to the scriptures. Let me throw this in parenthetically. This church is not a clubhouse. This church is not a clubhouse. It is the house of the Lord. And see, I don't know about you when you come into my house. You have to act like you are in my house. When we come into God's house, we need to act like we are coming into God's house because we are here to put it right. And when we talk about being here to put it right, we are to look after our brothers and our sisters. I'll hear two people clapping. Oh, yeah. Because the Bible says that we are to love God. Yeah. And we are to love our brothers and our sisters. Amen. It didn't say we are to try to love God and try to like our brothers and sisters. But it tells us that we are to love. Amen. So we are here, if we're going to put it right, to look after one another. Amen? Amen. But see, many times, when folk are in despair, and they may be dealing with trials and tribulations mm -hmm. that, are, that may not be their fault, mm -hmm. it is our job, Deacon Woods, to rescue them yes. and to restore them. Amen. Because we are here to put it right. Amen. We should be willing to offer a lifeline, mm. not cut the rope. All right. We are here to lift people up mm. when they are at their most vulnerable state. And but there are many things mm -hmm. that bind us together. But one of the things that binds us together is the fact that when we've been hanging on by the rope, somebody has cut it. Amen. We've all been rejected. Hallelujah. We've all been disappointed. Amen. We've all been lied about, Amen. talked about, and mistreated. Amen. But we are here, no matter how we have been treated in life, to love one another. Hallelujah. The Bible says. That God is love. And he or she who abides in love abides in God. And God in him or her. Amen. So we must understand on this morning, maybe before we get too far ahead of ourselves, who God and what God really is. He's not just some old guy that sits high and looks low. All right. The Bible says that he is the creator of all. Yeah. Man is made in his image. Yeah. He is our redeemer. He is our Lord. Yeah. And he is our king. We have to begin to recognize who God is. Yeah. But this particular point, it says God is love. And it tells us that we if we're going to put it right. We have to abide in love. Amen. And let me throw this in parenthetically. Just because you abide in love doesn't mean love will be returned to you. Amen. But it tells us if 
we abide in this love, God will abide in us. Hallelujah. And we are bound to him. And in him, because we are one people in him. That's why it behooves us to be unified. Amen. Because it's one Lord. One baptism. One body. But see, what I really want to talk about this morning is how we deal with rejection. Because like I stated, we've all been rejected. In the text, we find one of the most popular and simple scriptures of all. It is stating that sinful creatures, are y'all with me? Amen. Have eternal life because of God's great love. Notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say that we have eternal life because we come to church. Amen. It doesn't say we have eternal life because we have a badge on with our title on it. All right. We have eternal life because of God's great love. Amen. And if we want to really keep it real on today, we all got the same title. Yes, Servant. Yes, yes. Preach, Larry Moody. I'm doing the best I can. But see, we need to stop worrying about the titles. All right. And start focusing on trying to get it right. Praise the Lord. Understand that God's love is what makes things possible. Hallelujah. That's true. The reason that we're here is because of God's love. Because we have do we haven't been consumed yet. And God knows we tried to be. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about me, but I know y'all ain't like that, but I'm here because of God's great love. Amen. I can stand boldly and proclaim the gospel because of God's great love. Amen. He picked up a sinner like me. All right. All right, now. One of the worst that there was. And he cleaned me up. Yeah. Because of his great love. Yeah. He anointed me because of his great love. Yeah. He appointed me because of his great love. I am here today because of God's great love. Does anybody have that testimony up in here? Up in here on today. It was God's love that lifted me. Yeah. It was God's love yeah. that brought me out. It is God's love yeah. that protects me. He picks me up and he sets me straight. So we can try to get it right. But see, in spite of God's great love, he's still rejected. Somebody missed that. Even though God loves us unconditionally, we still reject him. Amen. This is the element that binds us together. We've all been looked over. Some of us were picked last when it came to sports. <laughs> we're ostracized. All right. We've been disliked. We've been out of favor with our brothers and our sisters. Yeah. We haven't always been accepted. And we haven't always been popular. All right. 
But nothing, and hear me, hear me, hear me. And I don't want you to feel bad about this, but I want you to know, nothing is more damaging to a human being yeah. than being and feeling rejection. All right. No matter where it comes from, Deacon is ready. No matter where it originates, we can agree that it does not feel good. Amen. But my question is, if it doesn't feel good, why do we do it? All right. And like I stated, Jesus experiences rejection from us. We don't always talk to him like we should. Yeah. All right. We don't always choose him first. Sometimes we brush him aside. All right. Sometimes we don't want to support his cause. Hallelujah. Sometimes we won't even let him be a part of our daily routine. Amen. Brother Slater, that's called rejection. But we thank God on today for his amazing grace. We thank God. I should have more than one person saying amen. We thank God for his amazing grace. And we thank him for his tender mercies. The songwriter says, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I need. The hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Somebody say great. We serve a great God. Great is thy faithfulness. In the midst of our unfaithfulness, great is our faithfulness. When we turn our back on him, great is our faithfulness. When we don't want to acknowledge him, they hear that they are great is our faithfulness. So how do we deal with rejection in a godly way? When we look at Jesus, we understand that no matter what rejection he endured, he never abandoned his mission. All right. Let me let me say this. If you abandon God. Because of something someone said or did to you, you have abandoned your mission. All right. All right. In Mark chapter 6, we find out that a prophet had minimal honor amongst his own folk. All right. And we see that Jesus' own hometown rejected him. Mm -hmm. We see here they were hindered because they were familiar with him. Yeah. They were familiar with Jesus and his family. Mm -hmm. His own people discarded his mission because of what they thought and what they assumed. Amen. They felt you can't allow what people think about you and assume about you to define your mission. Yeah. All right. He was turned away. Mm -hmm. But Reverend Stater, the Bible says he didn't stop. Yeah. 
All right. He was deferred, but not blocked. Yeah. He was shut down, but he was not shut off. Amen. See, it's not where you come from that characterizes you, but it's what you do that defines you. All right. He was cast out by his own folks. Amen. He was mocked and they refused to honor who he was. He was rejected yeah. for not being good, good enough by standards that were totally unrealistic. Yes. But yet they were amazed by his teaching. Yeah. <laughs> you ever heard that before? Oh, he, oh, he, he showed you preach, but ain't nothing but marriage son. Oh my God! He was rejected, but he never abandoned his mission. He never forsook his call. That leads us to point number two. He never. Abandoned the mission. We know that, right? All right. Not even on the cross. All right. Am I in the book? Yes. Okay, just want to know. Amen. Amen. That's right. He never abandoned the mission. No. But even when things got rocky, Deacon Smith, he never retaliated against those who disrespected him. My God. My God. Yes, yes. Haters don't hate. Crabs don't try to pull you down. But I dare you on today, don't focus on the haters. Don't focus on the crowd, but focus on God. Never abandon the mission and never retaliate against the haters. And I challenge you, I challenge you, I challenge you, I challenge you, I challenge you. if you got five haters, have 10 more by the end of the week. But see, even when Jesus was disrespected, even when Jesus was rejected, Sister Sharon, he still looked to restore. I'm going to prove it to you. His homeboy rejected him Three times. Mother take my time. Let me go with me. According to the word of God, Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 through 75. I got you, mother. One of Jesus' closest friends <laughs> denies him. He is rejected. What I say? Three times. Three times. Peter was in the courtyard. Yeah. Said the Lord must want me to say this. I was about to get happy. But Peter was in the courtyard digging woods. And he was warming himself by the enemy's fire. All right. You will never find godly refuge by ungodly means. Amen. You will never find godly success. Thank you, mother, for making me take my time. You will never find godly success by using the devil's tactics. All right. All right. All right. See, a servant girl came to Peter and said, you were with Jesus of Galilee. That's Jesus' homeboy, right? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. Let like another girl said to those who were there, this man was also with Jesus. Jesus' friend. I don't know the man. The next time he was asked, mother, he began to cuss. No, we don't do that up in here. He began to cuss. He said, I do not know the man. And immediately we know what happened. The rooster crowed. But Jesus was rejected by his friends. And I want to use this to show you that he did not retaliate. All right. Amen. But 
Jesus came back to Peter to restore him. Yes. Folks are going to do you wrong. Folks are going to call you everything but a child of God. Folks are going to reject you, but it is your mandate to restore them. Amen. So I'm telling you on today, never abandon the mission. And the mission, so we clear, is that this church makes disciples. Amen. 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 We never, because folks are going to talk about us. Folks are going to call us all types of names, but we have to keep our focus. Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. Rejection is going to come, but never abandon the mission. Amen. Never retaliate. But last but not least, and we kind of got to this point. Jesus responds in love to those who have offended him. It is our job, Deacon Westbrook, to simply love. We go back to the beginning of this message. The, the scripture said God is love. Mm -hmm. And he or she that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him or her. So it is our mandate. If we are in God and we really know who God is, that we are in love. And we are to show love. But my question for you this morning, and I'm going to leave you alone, just like in the Gatorade commercials. Is the love of God in you? When folks turn their back, is it in you? When they forsake you, is it in you? When they talk about you, all right. Is it in you? In the midst of trials, is it in you? In the midst of your tribulations, is it in you? If you forgot what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the love of God. When you find yourself dealing with hard times, is the love of God dwelling on the inside? When folks claim they don't love you anymore, is the love of God dwelling on the inside? No matter what you endure, no matter what you go through, don't walk away, don't leave, don't throw in the towel. Know that the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but the race is given to he or she that endures to the end. Do I got five folks that want to endure to the end through dangers seen unseen? I'm going to endure to the end. When I find myself all alone, I'm going to endure to the end. If my body is filled with pain, if folks are talking about me, if they're not supporting, I'm going to endure to the end. Don't get down. Don't be discouraged. Because I will lift up my eyes.
in love. Jesus will fight your battle. I want to encourage you on today. And I'm going to take my seat. Sister Sherry, we are unified. Because of rejection. They rejected our Savior. They're going to reject us. But stay the course. Don't abandon the mission. Don't worry about the haters. Don't worry about the naysayers. Never retaliate. Keep your focus on God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm done. But simply, simply continue to love. Let's give God some praise on today. Because we are unified. Protection. God bless you.